quick, come on. I feel like you scared me half to death. Hit the come on, come on, head over. Hi, the detectives, how can we help? Hi guys, quick question. Bought a small telescope recently, but it can't seem to see too far into space. Not a good start. What can I do? Of course we can help you, can't we, Phil? Yeah, we'll scope out some ideas for you. <sighs> My puns are brilliant. Right, Neve. when it comes to telescopes and stars, that's all physics, so it's right up my alley. I'll sort this one, not a bother. Okay, that's fine with me. Brilliant. Sorted me, legend. That's what he thinks. Before we start talking telescopes, here's a sciencey bit about how they actually work. So basically, in their most simplest form, they're a long tube with one lens at one end and a smaller lens at the other end. And what lenses do is that light comes in and they bend or refract the light, which means it can be magnified. So we're looking at something far away, light is bounced off it, comes in, goes in through one lens, it travels down the tube, splits out and goes into the other lens, and it's able to show us things that are much further away. They're magnified, and that's how a telescope works. So, Colm, does this telescope work pretty much the same as like a standard amateur telescope? Uh, it, it really is, just like a scaled up version of something you buy in the shop. You can see a lot of stars from our galaxy, and you can actually see beyond our galaxy and see some objects from, from very far away indeed. Way off into the beyond. Exactly. That's cool. So when you're looking at stars, which is exactly what our client wants to do, and the problem is they have a telescope which does the same job as this, but they can't see what they want to see. Is the, Why can't they do that? Well, there, there are a couple of factors that could be causing that. There's actually a, a big problem in Ireland and in other developed nations of light pollution. And are there other things that could affect it? The star moves in the sky, and tracking that manually can be very hard. In my experience, having a, buying a little automated tracker to attach to your telescope uh, works wonders for being able to observe something. What about modern technology? Can like apps and things help? Oh, definitely. There are a lot of good apps out there that give you maps of the sky. And if you don't actually know where to look to see your object, you're not going to spot it. So that's four things that really could help. Yeah, definitely. Neve. Neve. Hey, Phil, how are you? Yeah, hey, we just had a great chat with Colin. I have it all sorted. Don't need to do anything. Just head back to RT and I'll see you there, okay? Great, bye. Don't worry, I've got a much better solution than Phil has. It involves a telescope that uses radio waves. It's gonna blow your mind. When you think of radio waves, you think of the radio that you listen to at home. So you can hear that. But this is actually light waves converted to sound waves. Imagine if you could see things with these light waves. Well, now you can with a telescope called LOFAR. So LOFAR, which stands for the Low Frequency Array, is the largest radio telescope in the world. It has stations in the Netherlands, Germany, Poland, France, the UK, Sweden, and now it's coming to Ireland. Do all these stations connect together to make one telescope? That's correct. We combine the signals from all of the stations together in order to get an enhanced signal. And what's so special about having these stations very far apart is that the farther apart they are, the better resolution we get and the closer to an object we can see. How do we change those radio waves into an image that we can see. So what we end up using is a supercomputer, which allows us to process these signals and make a map of our sky. But the aim of LOFAR is to look as far back in time as possible. So as we know, light takes a certain amount of time to reach us. It takes about eight minutes to reach us from our own sun, about a few days from the nearest star. So we hope to be able to observe as far back in time, as close to the Big Bang as we can, to learn more about what happened. That's really cool. When you're looking into this telescope, you are basically looking back in time. Exactly. So we will be looking at radio waves that have traveled about 13 billion years or more. Whoa. Okay, let's deliver our answer. Get the client on the line. Okay, here's what we found out. First, I went to Dunsink Observatory. Got to see a rather large telescope. It's very old, by the way, but it can see very far into space. Picked up some tips and hints and found out also that it's open to the public, so you can bring your kid there and see further into space. Easy peasy, problem solved. Uh, not quite yet, Phil. What you didn't know is I went to visit some people in Lofar and I've got a way cooler option. Huh? It's basically the world's biggest telescope and part of it is being built right here in Ireland. And in a few years, you're going to be able to see billions and billions and billions of kilometers away. So there you go, another option. Bye. I could have come up with that. But you didn't, Phil. I did.